Namaste everyone. You can hear me well. Should we just chat? <laughs> because uh, otherwise it may seem like it become very formal and you may be a bit scared to ask questions and you, know, you may feel that you're wasting time or something. So just let's pretend we're all wasting time. <laughs> I never heard that in an intro to satsang. We all just wasting time. So, what should we chat about? What I really want to do is look at areas where you may feel like you get stuck or you're not so clear what is happening, what is the point of satsang. Just, just feel free, like uh, we are just having a nice chat with each other. So here lately, Father, I've just been noticing more and more of the mind and um, sometimes it, um, the thoughts that come across or it may go back to something that um, I may have done in the past or something, but it's just the um, we meet the checker guy, but it's like the, it's the ugliness of the mind is causing um, causing this one to feel uh, what's the word I should say uh, that the head feels pressured because one can see. So the ugliness of the mind is uh, what is this part? So it just talks such rubbish. Mm, the mind and um, it just jumps to the conclusions and judgments and um, blame and dosh sanshay doubt. So first thing is doubt. And then it's the immediate jumping at accusations or oh no so and so must have taken it. And you just look at it and you're like, my God, is this one is just so um incredibly manipulative and um, just ugly and how much of this one has uh, not just this mind but mind as such and sometimes one just feels my god I can't live with this one anymore a lot of that has been coming up causing some pressure because I just don't want to live with his mind anymore. Mm. Because now it's just so clear that it's just so full of rubbish. Yes. Yes. It does happen this way that uh, there's this world which is all full of stuff. Every day something happens. Every day there is something for the mind to talk about, something for us to judge. So there's this world and there's this mind which is creating narratives in the center of which is a lie, is it? the center of which is a me which actually doesn't exist. And for most of humanity, most of our brothers and sisters, this seems to be the extent of what the world is. And you can add some emotions and some things, but basically this realm of perceptions and the narrator which is telling us the narrative. 
but a few among us are saying that there is another way to live. See, there is something more real than what we take to be presently real. So, what is this reality? And how do we approach that? How do we get to that? So, let's say that God is the reality that we are talking about. Or the self is the reality, the truth is the reality that we are talking about. Given that in the world, there is hardly anything which truly points to that reality. And only those who have come to him can truly point to him anyway. Therefore, our first endeavor should be to find a teacher who can guide us to this higher reality than the existence of the world. So, even to search for a teacher, you see, most of our brothers and sisters will not do because they don't have faith that there is something beyond this world right now. You see, they feel like it's all about this and all talk of God really is just a consolation, is just a support mechanism. So why do we need to find a teacher when there is not enough faith in there being something greater than the Maya, the perceivable world. You see? So, if we find a Guru, then our job becomes a lot simpler. Because one who has actually come to the recognition of God, come to the recognition of that which is beyond this Maya, then he can point us to or she can point us to this. But the role of the outer Guru is only to bring us to the discipleship of the Sadguru within. Because the guidance that is needed is moment to moment and really cannot be templatized. I cannot make a system out of it and say that this will apply to you in all moments. You see? So the attempt in satsang is to paint the broad strokes following which we know how to at least go within ourselves looking for the true master which is the Atma within. You see? So we go from servitude to the mind, discipleship of the mind, which is completely selfish and leads to suffering, to mostly a discipleship of an outer Guru, who has to remember that their job is really to bring you to the true discipleship of the Atma within. You see? Because when these things happen, when the mind is being extremely nasty and terrible and we don't feel like living a life where the mind is ruling and oppressing us in this way, then to have the presence of the Guru with you in the form of the Atma within is the one that can bring you out of this maze out of this chakra view. So, really, when we look at the broad project, which is that we must come to the realization of God, you see, then the main attempt to come to that realization of God is to come to the discipleship of the Holy Spirit or the Atma within. So, have we understood that this is the project? Yeah? We, can, we can continue the conversation.
Have you understood that this is the project? Huh? You feel that this is the project? Now, some of us may also say that, why do I need a guru? I can go straight to God. You see, why is an intermediary required? You see, and it is possible that you may spontaneously wake up to God's presence in your life. But it is very rare and also that if you have someone who has climbed the mountain, then why not take their assistance? You see? So, in that way it is, um, it is very helpful. And we have to uh, really give ourselves the best chance, isn't it? Now, what happens when we encounter a guru, a teacher who is truly interested in only bringing us to God, then the what do you feel like the mind is going to do? Throw major tantrums. Throw tantrums find ways to resist, find ways to block us or get us to run in some way. You see, whether it is doubt or whether it is uh, a false sense of accomplishment, uh, whether it is some spiritual pride or even spiritual unworthiness. You see, any, either way it can play to get us to just run, <laughs> to get us to run. So, what you are saying about the mind is not unexpected. You see, it is going to happen this way and uh, some may experience it more severely, some may experience it less severely, but the nature of the mind is very much like this. So, for me, if the mind has become especially resistive, it's a good sign. You see, that means you're climbing the right wall that it doesn't want you to climb. See? So, it's doing that. Now, what are the ways in which we can counter this attack, the mind attack? You see? And so that we can return to the stability in our heart. That is the endeavor, isn't it? So, uh, among all the tools that you've been provided in satsang, what helps you the most to return from the way of the head to the way of the heart? At the moment, nothing. I'm just feeling very, very mindy. Yes, yes. Um, but if there is memory about the past few months, then do you, are you able to recall what is... Ajahn, singing, kirtan, yes, yes. chanting. Yes. These open up yes. uh, the most. Uh, <clears throat> sitting with a Sangha brother or sister, and speaking of the Leela. We love God, we love the Guru. That immediately brings one to the heart. Let's say, choose these two. Yes. When the mind is throwing lots of resistiveness, um, reading something you've said, what you post on Gem, yes. that opens up to yes. the heart. This is very good. So, in this realm of Maya, also there are spiritual allies. <laughs> spiritual allies carry the perfume of God. So when you hear a bhajan, it has a fragrance which leads us to our heart, it leads us within ourselves. And we can come to the holiness, the presence of the Atma within. In the same way when we chant his name or when we inquire or do the neti neti and say not this, not this, not this, we come to the holy place within ourselves where his flame, his light is shining and his flame, his light is always shining for all of us. You see, it's only a question of how obscure it becomes because of all this mental traffic, mental attack, you see, and worldly distraction in so many other ways. So, what you will find often is that if your prayers, if, you, if it is just not happening in that moment, then it's fine, put on the bhajan. You see? 
talk to someone who really loves god who really loves to talk about god you see anything it's like uh, when we seem to be drowning it doesn't matter what kind of lifeboat comes what kind of support comes you see so but the point is to return and you will start to notice more and more that our nose becomes stronger and when the mind is tempting us to come back into this place because it doesn't happen immediately although now it may say it happens immediately <laughs> you see but it doesn't happen immediately it sends you a test bubble uh, what do you think about this one hmm? i feel this one is always very rude see then if that is being bought you see then the ground is being created then something then something then you see and soon it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and before you know it you see you that initial feel good when we make a judgment no that initially feels good somewhere that oh i'm so right you see this one is so bad or something like that that quickly disappears and it seems like we are just caught now to god seem like a distant idea yes and it may even stop you from being able to listen in satsang no you come to such a point but the point is that as you endeavor to keep returning to him you see then you will find that you don't get so easily trapped in these places you see because you start to notice the smell of it the mind is very harmless sounding very friendly you know maybe even funny hai kitna pagal hai ha like that you see is a harmless judgment you see <laughs> would you buy into that and then like yeah you know like this then more conclusion then more conclusion and before you know it you're in this hellish sort of place and then like most of our brothers and sisters in the world we are trying to make this hell palatable you see we're trying to make this hell palatable uh, through substances through social interaction through various things how to you see how to make it seem like i'm still good i'm still all right but we can only come to that by dropping all of this and surrendering to god's light so use your kirtan use your inquiry use your chanting use the ideas use the mala use whatever you can use a spiritual passage that you read somewhere listen to a satsang whatever you can so that you return you see and once you return then we know how to value that because we know what can happen one we we in the beginning can become a bit complacent about it because it can seem like ah you see but then you learn to safeguard that and you keep away from the bad company of the world and the mind because then you need to safeguard the the, the light which is burning in your heart altar you see so but while you're in this state it doesn't make it doesn't help at all to think about things like why is why am i even living why is this happening what is the point you see these are the two punches of the mind you see it traps us in this place then it keeps us involved with all this kind of why 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 you see just swim as fast as you can as much as you can towards your heart just dive into your heart helplessly and there you will find comfort you will find guidance you will find love rejuvenate yourself yeah. something very beautiful i have it uh, just yesterday or this morning was uh, uh, hanuman poddar ji said agar gir gaye ho to uth jao is it it can seem like such a so let me translate so if you fall in down then get, then get up is it it can seem too simplistic and naive but it's a very very potent pointer 
put in the most simple way you see if you've gone with the way of the head you see then return don't think how when what was right what was wrong why did it happen nothing just return and if it feels like you can't return you're trapped then pray or inquire or both it's just that uh, the lots of questions are coming and i feel the need to answer the mind pushing to answer and it doesn't have the answer i don't have the answer yeah. it could be anything could be where are they coming people. from where what is the source of the question so is are these mind. contemplative questions no, from the heart no, which is saying work related questions yeah. they'll be everyday kind of questions like i'm setting up my flat do you want this or do you want that these simple questions like that but it's it's just the questions around you yes. and they become about everything they become about setting up your flat they become about work they become about yes. uh, and it's the same things that have surrounded you your entire life right. Exactly. So you can see that also. Exactly. See, Simple I want to tell you one thing. Effects. The most important construction you are doing is not your house, is not your work, is not your relationship. Huh? It's not your house. It's not your work. It's not your relationships. It's not about anything like that. The most important construction work you are doing is the inner temple to God. your heart temple you see what do you want to put there so rather than thinking about what will i put in my house <laughs> doesn't matter you see doesn't matter it doesn't matter what dining table you'll have and what paintings you'll have and none of that actually matter it's unimportant completely <laughs> is it so find someone if you want who is volunteering to do it for you let them do whatever they want you need you need a bed to sleep on a table to eat on what is the big deal so don't worry about any of this stuff also i want to tell you very literally that when it comes to work no if you do god's work then you see how he does your work see we've heard this of course all of us have heard this growing up but really experiment with it um garima and i were talking the other day and i just pointed out to her that there's so many instances where we may try 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 but ultimately god's grace just makes it see if it is meant to be it just makes it so don't exert yourself in these worldly ways just surrender to him in your heart and he will provide whatever energy is needed if it is needed to do whatever it is on the outside you see so remember what we were talking about in the park that the opportunity doesn't keep coming again and again you see avsar bar bar nahi aave as kabir ji has told us that means that the whole point of maya is to distract you from the main construction work that you have to do see so remember that it's a distracting machine you stay and if you say i will stay then you see what kind of forces come to you from your heart to protect you and to help you to remain you see but start somewhere and say i will not be pushed around by maya i will not be pushed around by my mind my life is for god and i am going to stay with him come what may and if you do that then you see that you are protected by the atma itself the satguru presence is the great protect protector as well you see so we have to deepen in our faith about what god can do sound strange because we 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 think that we feel that god can do everything 
you see but we make a lot of exceptions oh but this he can't do my work he can't do my house he can't do you see my questions he can't answer <laughs> all these things we believe but none of these are true now we obviously cannot expect god to be a genie you see it means that oh i i leave this to you god you must do it that would be just a convenience so that's a uh, expectation of servitude rather than becoming in servitude to god you see but if you truly surrender to him is the best uh, gift you can give to yourself so it's impossible to really suffer unless you desire unless you want it. we say that the mind is wanting all of this you see but unless you align yourself with the mind you can't suffer you must you have to be buying some story and that is what leads to suffering if you didn't do that and all of it is just coming and going tell me and don't imagine this like many of you have made advaita vedanta into an imagination of emptiness an imagination of nothingness you see where maybe you made a refuge in your head somewhere of a blank empty space and you may be calling that awareness but that is not it as you are truly unattached to your mind you are going to discover great beauty in your heart great love great joy great peace great knowledge inside in your heart and in that will you truly find the nature of awareness which is too much for any mind to comprehend see so even for the ultimate reality we have to rely on the sadguru presence within so now will you become as unconcerned as possible about everything that you that concerns you like now you have to make that determination we of course will keep feeling will keep failing at it you see but the idea is not to feel the idea is to commit fully you see and then as hanuman ji said if we fall we'll get up you see if we fall we'll get up you see and uh, this is a very beautiful falling and getting up unlike the failure in the world to fall in our attempt to come to him is a great uh, falling and a great getting up so don't look at it as any sort of oppressive project it's the most beautiful project and that is what your life is meant for if you spend your whole life and you built thousands of beautiful things now which the whole world admires whole world says wow 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 then what happens to all of it when the dream gets over this has as much substance as a dream don't forget that uh, so that vairagya is very important you see uh, the vivek to see that this is un- unreal and reality is that which is beyond perception and therefore the dispassion towards the world and its things is very important you see when you have that vairagya then you will be drawn within to your true place so unconcerned with the world surrendering to god and if it sounds like a risk then we have to take the risk that's why faith comes in so and this faith is difficult initially because 
it is faith in that which at the moment is unperceivable and that uh, which the mind tries to project as perceivable that could also be distraction you see so use all of that to dive into your heart how does it sound to you to become a disciple of the atma does it sound good but difficult unachievable far fetched just a notion what is it what does it seem like Said the base of the cross is is has immense grace and immense suffering. Yes. So yes. Feel, but what does it feel like? What does it sound like? If I said to you, you have to spend the rest of your life as a disciple of the Sadguru presence within or the Atma within. Sounds like a miracle. Is it very good? So, I promise you that it is possible. You see, but you have to work with me. <laughs> you have to work with me, and uh, with the mind, be a warrior. With your heart, be a sheep. Uh -huh. So, when your mind is coming and bullying you, then you just say, "I am not interested in anything you have to say," and with your heart, just. Have a sense of humility, faith, servitude. Then you see that you will be blessed with this great gift. Is it? But we are not to check on our progress before two years from now. We mark this date, and where's your notebook today? You didn't get. <laughs> is uh, progress checking either celebrating or feeling frustrated too soon you see just gets in the way uh, so you've taken this two year expedition on this mountain but you can't check how far you've reached what has happened none of that uh, so no celebrating too soon and no worrying too soon because the mind will offer both one tiny thing will come and it'll start saying wow wow wow, wow <laughs> like that and one day of some suffering in all say it'll say it's all useless pointless i'm going please come with i'm not cut out for this mutsani ho raha hai sab you know all of that stuff so we're not to do any of that is it feel yes keep at it keep at it with the innocence of a child the humility of a child then i promise you that life will become unrecognizable compared to what it is now how to even describe it somewhere i have to only hope that you are catching its perfume in your heart you see you are catching the scent of something which is calling you deep within you and most importantly know that all help can only come from him from god so we have to try whatever we feel is at our disposal but you must rely on his strength not on yours otherwise that frustration or pride will come but once you know that everything is his
have you heard some of uh, anandmayi ma satsang the people they just ask us oh, why does this happen why is god doing this you see this is not right and she just says unki moj which means that it's his kingdom he can do what he wants you see and what we believe and what we think about it is completely irrelevant you see and although this only initially may seem oppressive yeah, is like neil degrasse tyson also said that the universe uh, has no responsibility to make sense to you you see so if this universe which is just a tiny speck of its creation has no responsibility to make sense to us then we better stop expecting the father the creator to make sense to us okay. so most of our time then is not wasted in on the why why is it like this why this why that and even for those answers you see remember that our intellect is not capable of this kind of understanding okay. but your intuition is so even if you really want the answers what is the nature of reality what is goodness what is justice what is truth where can we go to find them the same one and don't worry about uh, what is happening to you as much as possible as much as possible don't be concerned about this happening to me this is not happening to me this is happening for me not happening for me yes god 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 ram 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 krishna 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 what and then if it is his grace then the holy spirit accepts you as a disciple and only in that grace do you come to the realization of god and once you come to the realization of god then his flame burns so brightly in your heart that you that is the point at which we can say the temple has been constructed temple is constructed now but you still have to keep it you see you have to keep it uh, smelling right for god you don't want to make it smell of anger and jealousy and pride and this kind of thing you want it to be filled with devotion and love and peace and generosity so don't worry it it may seem like the project is very difficult it's unachievable but uh, what is the what is option 2 <laughs> if you say i'm not cut out for this uh, i'm going to run i really cut out for this uh, what can we run to is it so for a while you will seem like it will seem like you're stuck <laughs> you're stuck in the sense that you've tasted you glimpsed the truth is it is it but maya still got its tentacles in you you see got its claws in you so then the escaping it can seem like every step towards the truth leads to pain uh, it can seem like that is it so that is why for many spiritual aspirants uh, there comes an initial feeling of peace and bliss is it then a uh, a period of time where it's so frustrating so irritating so resistive we just want to go back to that peace and bliss and we don't want to you see we just that's where the frustration comes but we just came for the peace 
Uh, we didn't come for all this God stuff. We just wanted to be happy. But what happens is a natural progression. You see, you get a sense of what is there in your heart, which is unfathomable to the mind. You see, and then uh, the mind starts its full-on attack and trying to keep you. Now, many escape the wrong way. You see, many can feel like, oh, I'm not ready for this, or it's not working for me all these kind of thing and you may find uh, yourself escaping you see but the few very few who truly persevere you see, truly persevere will escape the gravitational pull of maya you see and you will transcend its uh, ways and you will come to a truer way of life See, so all the tools are at your disposal. We are lucky to live in these times where we can talk about the Jnana Path, the Bhakti Marg, the Karma Yoga, all these paths are available. But uh, the spiritual project has not changed since the beginning of humanity. The project has always been to let go of our individuality, to let go of our individual will and to live in the light of His will. So first we have to meet Him. So the meeting is being arranged in satsang. But once you meet him, then the work starts. All of this will only happen if you have a commitment to unceasingly be in prayer or unceasingly be empty for God. Because every moment is is a offer. Every moment is an offer between the me and between God. What are you gonna pick? Every moment you have to pick between self-concern and God. Every moment the light of the heart is calling you but the world in all its joyrides are also compelling you. So spiritual life is just moment after moment after moment. So, if the project is clear, the project is clear, yes. then what is the plan? Plan is to be, the plan is to be in unceasing prayer, unceasing focus on God, whether it is inquiry, whether it is karma yoga, whether it is 
bhakti whether it is hatha yoga whether it is whatever is uh, that is unimportant 100% of the focus has to be on god is yeah, that is what i am mean by unceasing prayer yes so is that the plan how many feel like that's the plan and no peer pressure type thing Huh? Huh? so this is what i want to hear from all of you what is the intention is the intention to stop at peace and like to try and hang on to an absence of suffering or is the intention to go all the way and live in god's light so most of us also have this notion of a cheap grace so we've been reading this book called the cost of discipleship where i spoke about this the other day that two kind of two types of people say they don't know anything one is a freshman in college who has just started so i don't know anything you see and there's another one who has given all their might the greatest philosophers the greatest students the greatest disciples who say after 50 years that nothing really can be known you see are both the statements the same they sound the same i don't know anything and a fancy way of saying i don't know anything is nothing can be known isn't it aren't both the same no. see there's a huge difference in both <clears throat> see so what happens many times in advaita i've seen over the last 12 years is that we can pick up on the statement but we don't realize that the source of the statement makes all the difference see so so the statement that all has to be his grace can come from a mouth which is using it as an excuse not to give up or surrender you see saying oh if my surrender has to happen then he has to do it you see and uh, um if i have to find god then he has to do it if i have to inquire then he has to do it because it's all grace no all the masters have said it's grace you see but there's a difference between that one saying it and and bhagwan saying it and bhagwan said it's all ultimately grace it came after a lifetime of sadhana and by eating by being eaten by ants in a cave even after he had an awakening experience as a child how much sadhana how much huh? so did he ever say i am not not recalling anywhere where he said that actually none of that was needed just like that experience happened when i was 14 or 16 just sitting in my house i should have just left it to grace only he never said that so only those who come to the point of full surrender dedicating themselves fully to god have the lips to say it can all happen by his grace it is it is completely without my doing only those who have done everything in in their disposal even if that is nothing you see because the statement is always true that nothing truly can be known conceptually at least you see so so cheap grace um, is that grace which is a cop out basically is escapism you see costly grace comes at the cost of discipleship so those who want the benefit of grace without the cost of discipleship are just fooling themselves you see and what is the cost of discipleship our entire life so only those who 
are willing to pay the cost of discipleship can talk about grace. Otherwise, it's just lip service spirituality. Beautiful book, um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, The Cost of Discipleship. Haven't we seen this in our lives? In Sanghas, we've been, we've seen this. How the mind can use the notion of grace also to prevent a full surrender, to prevent a full servitude. And what happens then? You see? For a while, you see? and I have had these instances in uh, Sangha also, there was one child who was so dear to me, so close to me, I used to say that um, uh, if I am unwell or something like that, you see, I'm not answering, I'm busy with something, then you can ask your questions to her. And then what happened is that she got caught up in this sort of mental Advaita notions. And Maya just played such a strong trick uh, that, uh, yeah, she just became a very convenient Advaita type um, thing, you know. And, uh, what is going to happen in these situations where we say it is the, the path of full surrender is too difficult. So let me just use some cheat codes and say, ah, all is this grace. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my life is for God, really. Yeah. So there is no evidence of that, there is no smell or fragrance of that. So, not only, and who, who do they end up fooling? Who do we end up fooling? Just ourselves. So don't get trapped in this kind of a armchair, lip service, spirituality. Spirituality of the intellect, which is full of all the best sounding ideas. But where is the presence of God? Where is the light in our life? You can be a zombie with the best ideas, unlike the zombies we see in the movies. <laughs> Zombiehood or zombie dumb or whatever it is. The only antidote is the living life, no? The living presence of God. What is the antidote? What is the way? It is to have an unceasing focus on God. Yeah. I am really saying that the method is not important in the sense that what you are guided to about the method in satsang and from the Sadhguru, more importantly from the Sadhguru within is very important for you to follow. You see? But it is not in the semantics of the method, it's not in the counting of whether you're being precise in your breaths, you see, or you've done the pronunciation perfectly. In fact, to, the way to supercharge your prayer is to know that God knows every breath of us. He knows our every breath, our every intention, our every heartbeat. He is here right now, always with you. 
and this can be very reassuring for the true sadhaka for the true aspirant and it can be very scary for those who are just being mental and selfish I just want to uh, surrender. There's sometimes there's this uh, feeling of checking what's really happening, you know, because there's deepening in the heart. So it's a very unknown territory, you know. So yeah. I just feel that I just want to yeah. surrender but this because there's this. Need. Intuitively checking or like yeah. what kind of checking? What what can approach that realm to be able to determine the. Yes, so if it's intuitive, it is good. Yes, sometimes I feel I should really check with you. Yeah. <laughs> but Abba? I really fear, fear that father. I fear that maybe is it coming from the mind or coming yeah. from the mind. So what's, what's your plan? I mean, what are you doing? Father, I mostly do the inquiry. Yes. In the morning, the first thing, waking up to God. Very. That is, is happening. The other mic is not working. It's louder, let's see. Yeah. Can you, is it? Am I audible now? Yeah. So you wake up and you start with the inquiry, okay? Yeah. So then? I sit with the, this presence, Father, you know, this beingness, and it's here in the heart, I can sense, and I try my best to stay with this. Any thought comes, I just let it come and let it go. Very good. And I stay here. Very good. And I can feel that the deepening is happening, Father, because it's, I'll be wrong, because there's something in the heart that just knows that, you know, there's, very good, it knows very, that deepening. Very good. I cannot fake that. So. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes I feel that I should check with you <laughs> what's really going on, Father, you know, because it's... Thank you. So, okay, good. So you do the inquiry and it seems to be working and you come to his presence okay then then there are there are these times of praying to to god yeah. that please please reveal you know please reveal your presence Very because good. that is it comes from the heart you know like please you know please reveal please Very help good. Please Very help. Good. and it's a very heartfelt prayer which i know it comes very deeply from the Very, good. very good. i really very cannot good. say that it's coming from the okay. heart so approximately what time are we at now in the morning? Uh, maybe 8 o'clock. Yeah. 8. 8, okay, 8 then after that? Uh, then the work starts around 9.30. You know, yeah. like, uh, I have to sit for work. Yeah. Uh, but again, what happens is I time my work in such a way where I do take breaks in between. Yeah. And, uh, during Not, the so tell me about work. Uh, how does it go during work? These days, I'm experimenting with work, Father. You know, like earlier, yeah. what used to happen, the minute the work used to start, I used to be totally absorbed. Yeah. And again, I used to forget, you know, about yeah. God and remembering Him. Yeah. But what's happening now is, like, uh, I'm experimenting, basically, just trying to feel the presence and also yeah. working you know, at the same time. So it's been helpful, uh, yeah. but I still want to, like, yeah. continue with this. I won't say that. It's, it's very good. important. And I'm also learning this, I'm yes. not saying I'm perfect at this at all. Uh, to put his work first. Yes. And yes. in our surrender to him, allow the outer work to happen. Yes, Father. I'm, I'm really yes. so this is Yes. Like so this is the next stage of the project for you, which is that the morning seems to be going fine. You seem to be empty and inquiring. Then you're praying as well. And then uh, for this uh, large period of time that we call work, we cannot be away from God. No, we can't forget yes. about God that entire time. So that uh, can seem a bit difficult, but it's very important. One, 
tool that I've also been using is that I just feel like he's with me. You have this the yeah. sense of presence yes. always, you see, and not not always. Yes. The attempt is to keep it always, but to just when he's forgotten, then just to return. Okay, yeah. You see? And you see that it's not detrimental in any way for that which we call work. Because it's the light of presence which is doing everything anyway. Exactly. Yes. So in this play of Maya, the the primary work, which which metaphorically I'm calling temple construction, you see, is not, is the most important work that we have to do. All the rest of the work has to come out of the surrender to him in in his blessing in his light as to what what can happen and what cannot happen. Yeah. So see if uh, uh, you can keep inquiring through the day in moments, if that helps or you need to use the ADS or you need, you need, to, need to, to do something, maybe a mala or something like that, whatever tool you think can keep you in remembrance. That may be. Uh, Father, I helpful. listen to your satsangs. Eh? Yes. Whenever yeah. there are breaks in between yeah. work, I try my best to yeah. Uh, yeah. play your satsang and I keep listening to it. Yeah. You know, like, That's good. Even before sleep, yeah. I sleep with your satsangs, as well, with your words. So. When you say that, uh, <laughs> they just. Uh, not in the when they're not getting sleep, they just put on <laughs> yeah. not in this the droning voice. Sure. voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just messing. But it's good like that and also whatever I'm, I'm really seeing that the method is not important. Maybe. If it's a bhajan, bhajan, Bhajans if it is a, um, have you all noticed how much depth has come into our spirituality um, just by reading books like Kirkegaard, by watching yes. The Chosen, yes. now by watching Ramayana, you see all this even to immerse ourselves in any way. Yes. That the focus is God is really uh, really helpful yes. because um, that main work is to uh, live in His light. Father, I want to check one thing. Yes. Yeah. Since uh, I don't know whether it's a resistance to ADS or prayer, like a formal prayer, yeah. but uh, of course, I, when I do the inquiry, when there is deepening, the prayer happens by yeah. itself. You know? So yeah. it's, uh, I don't know, but when it comes to ADS yeah. or any kind of a formal yeah. prayer, I see some yeah. resistance. Just check with yourself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually. So, so don't hide from what you know. Okay. By yourself, you don't have to expose it in satsang. But uh, we all know in our heart, no? we all know in our heart what is going on with us. I think uh, I'm grateful that this is strongly felt, Father, you know, like yeah, the heart. And I have to be very grateful to you, Father, to be able to sense this. You know? It's like really a constant, um, it's guiding, it's the laying down the law, you know, literally for the whole life. Mm -hmm. it's like in a compass like you mentioned, it's becoming very strong. So whether we are being empty or we are praying or we are inquiring or we are being devotional in our bhajans, in our uh, chanting, any of these, the, the, the method is not really primary. If we can just keep our focus on God no matter what. And sometimes what happens is because of conditioning, we are resistive to that which is actually very apparently helpful to keep the focus on God. Because our mind says, no, no, but this will mess this up and this will do this. You see, it doesn't. Yes. Because uh, remember that God is intelligent. He's the supreme intelligence. So if our intention is correct, 
then we will never waste this life because of lack of method. Sure. Uh, he will always find a way to tell us the right method. See? So keep your intention to be with him always. See? Uh, then the methods will get clarified and if your mind is resisting some things which are actually very apparently helpful, see? then just don't fall for any of that. Just try. Try and see what happens. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Thank you so much. I really wanted to surrender this checking sometimes that it comes uh, very strongly yeah. to check on what's really going yeah. on. Remember that uh, the only true way to check is intuitively. Yes. Yeah. So if it gives you an opportunity to go to your heart, then take it. It's so uh, when it comes to intuitive checking, yeah. like what, how does it happen, yeah. Father? Like, is it like so intuitive uh, contemplation? is done in a sheer emptiness. Yeah. What happens? You ask a question like, what is the nature of reality? Uh, or who am I really? Or what is love? What is truth? Or even many times, what should I do? We find that our intellect is not able to provide the right answer. So what do we do? We just carry the intention of the question with us and just leave it in the chamber of the heart and you just remain empty so then it sprouts when it has to you see the answer just sprouts and uh, because our intuition is the all-knowing because it is the intelligence of god but uh, what it chooses to bring to the surface is up to its intelligence so we can just make a petition she, and keep that uh, intention in our heart. Then many times you may feel like you don't know what happened, but you know the answer. Yeah. You see? It's just because it's like that. Many times you might find that he is speaking to you in your heart. So you're having a conversation with God. Many times you may feel that. In the world, something just appears to give you the answer, exactly the answer that you needed, and your heart knows that that's an answer to your prayer. So we can communicate using any mechanism, but our faith has to be really strong. Somewhere it is said, was it a Course in Miracles where it said the The voice of the Holy Spirit is as audible as our willingness to hear. So this, uh, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but uh, if we are truly faithful and willing, then why can God not talk to us? He can talk to us and He will. Yeah, the notice and return. That is the noticing and returning, yes. you know, like the minute I notice myself uh, de de digressing. Yes. If you notice, you're getting caught. Yes. Thank you, Father. I think that's Great. been very helpful. That is the thing, no? That uh, yes. see, what happens is many times when what is the difference between the checker guy and this? The checker guy will say, "Oh, see how you are. What are you doing? You're exactly. always like this." Punch. There's, there's an, you see, yeah. just punch after punch. You see which is the opposite of what Hanumanji said, which is like, if you've fallen, then get up. You see, it is that you noticed and then you drop it, right? You move yeah, on. So that you noticing just, is a exactly. auspicious one. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And that way, you, see, you notice, oh, you're, you're in, the, in the hypnosis of the servant of hell. <laughs> and then you just... Thanks for clarifying because a lot of times what happens when the observing happens, I try to see is it the mind observing or is it really yeah. checking happening by, from the heart? Well, the mind can't really observe. No? Okay. It has no tool to observe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. The mind only offers us yeah. Yeah. thoughts and images. The attention and belief we bring into the picture. The, that faith, I think. 
It's very important. That's why I felt like we must just all of us have these chats so that I can meet everyone and see what is I really wanted to them. share this, you know, and uh, I thought maybe one day I should come and join in the walks, you know, someday in the morning yeah. and I can share more deeply about what's really Well, walks, we hardly talk. Okay. Yeah, these are very rare uh, mm. walks. In the walks, we just use it as time for prayer. And uh, I'm sure all the others feel like we are a weird bunch. <laughs> uh, some of us have malas. You know, I am just praying all the time. Many times my eyes are shut and I'm leading this bunch of like walker runners <laughs> around the park. So, but we hardly, uh, very rarely we speak about uh, satsang and things. But just to enjoy that uh, morning time of praying, that's what's nice. So it's not a prerequisite. You can just, if you're praying at home and you don't like um, feel the need, uh, like your body is fit enough and you don't, that's fine. So like a last, yesterday evening, I wanted to write a message to you. Uh -huh. Like, uh, Father, what's really happening? You know, can you please tell me? <laughs> but I just uh, thought that I should do that. Maybe I'll ask you here in Satsang. Beauty of uh, his discipleship, no? You see how much of this happens. A question could just come to you for half a second, and somehow the answer comes so beautifully in your heart or in the world. It's just, it's a completely different way of life. It is, it's radical, actually. It's like a oppressive master, which is the mind, which is holding us prisoner. And then there's the light of God, which is so loving and kind and compassionate and true and faithful. And He's willing to spend all His time with you. We don't have to worry about whether He's available or not. We don't have to take appointments. So beautiful, no? Like uh, C.S. Lewis said that uh, it's like the author of the book knows the character better than the character ever can, and he's aware of every step the character is taking. So God is like that. He's authoring our life as well as allowing us to feel like He doesn't get in our way. So. Beyond conceptualization, how the light of this universe also is like a loving father who says, Okay, let them do, let them learn, it's okay. You see? <laughs> till, till we turn to him and say, No, no, I've gone down the wrong way too long, and we return like the prodigal son. You see? Father, the intention is to see unseasonally be in God's presence. Yes. yes. It is exactly. The intention is that. You know, very good. Very see good. It from my heart. Yes. And I'm happy to discuss with all of you. And if you say to me that my intention is 200%. Be in his presence unceasingly, to be for him to be the focus of my life constantly. But this is where I'm struggling. You see, this is where I'm finding trouble. This is what still gets me. Then I feel like we can really make good headway. But if you say, Yes, yes, it's my intention and it seems to be fine, it's happening. No? Uh, what, what do you want to know? <laughs> Then either I'm like, if I can smell the fragrance in your words, then I'm very happy. Maybe I should come and sit at your feet. And uh, but if I don't, then then I'll I'll be a bit concerned about what's happening. I surely share the things that you know, yeah. do come in the way. Yeah. And, and I want these satsangs to become more like that, like yes. more where you say, because in terms of saying, I've said like. 
mostly everything i wanted to share but um, in terms of making a living experience for you of being of expanding this family of god you see of expanding his discipleship that will come when you share where you get stuck what happens you see I feel I have a big struggle. Yeah. Um, the moment I hear the word unceasing, I don't. What I'm I'm still trying to find the right word for what I'm feeling. I was going to make a joke and say we can say nirantar if you want. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it's more like helplessness yeah. more than resistance because. it feels like the desire for her like for me it's devi i'm not able to permanently locate it it's almost like it feels like that desire for her is also her grace and i i don't have that faculty in me to be in unceasing desire for her there is intention but that intention feels meant okay good so beautiful you don't have the faculty to create this authentic desire okay let's presume that that is true what what other faculty do we have one is intention you see the intention is true then i don't know because for me it is also not that if i'm in some kind of a practice yeah. either chanting or prayer or a ritual um with that also it feels like the desire comes and goes and like i was sharing last time when there is desire and she meets me then it's like a deluge and it's, it's like deluge is followed by a uh by a like a drought and then there's a deluge so it's so much oscillation you know that sometimes i'm like what's happening yeah, yeah. so many times it happens that those of us that encounter grace is it they encounter grace and one of the definitions of grace is um, undeserved gifts is it undeserved gifts in the sense that we can't fathom why this happens with me is it can't fathom why this happens with me uh like i can't fathom why any of this happened with me it has to be his grace so that is the uh, very definition of grace that it is the gift is far beyond anything that we can lay claim to that we can say that this is something that i deserve now what is the then the attitude of the recipient of this grace what is the what is being shown to them is that real is that true so you say that sometimes just 
without any planning without any intention even just this deep desire to meet the divine mother comes in your heart you see and she makes her presence felt to you you see and she provides the desire as well as the darshan in this case so what prevents one like this foolish one who has received so much grace from god from being then like sri ramakrishna is what what would prevent the recipient of this grace to spend then his entire life in service to that loving compassionate mother who reveals herself in his heart what prevents either the desire or the the feeling that i can do something to serve her to be in her presence what 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 stops us because if if we come to her presence then we've seen that there's nothing in the world which can compare to that you see so whatever faculty we feel that we have at our, at our disposal then you see if we don't have the ability to create that fire to invoke her then what is it that we have or what is it that we feel we have which we do on a daily basis we tell our uh, friends and peers and relationships to do something get that done i want this to be done you see we want them to think differently you see don't think negatively think positively we want them to not pay attention to certain emotions and not uh, and pay attention to other emotions you see so so when it comes to the other fields of life be it relationship work whatever else it seems that we are able to apply our faculties you see so why is it that the same faculties we don't feel like we can apply to serve the divine mother you see what is it that stops us and where is the notion that it must arise from only from this desire you see uh, maybe it can arise as as uh, gratitude for her maybe it can arise as um uh, Uh, guru dakshina for her because her presence also uh, is all encompassing it it lights us up it teaches us you see it uh, burns so much garbage that we've collected in one moment of being in her presence so so even if no great experiences come and it's seems pretty arid and lifeless still it would be better than forgetting about her the rest of the time isn't it so i would say that uh, yes it is grace that you got filled with this desire and it is grace of course that her presence is palpable to you but now with everything at your might for any other thing that you may think you have it at your disposal make it in service to her that would be uh, my advice as a like a elder brother in this uh, process that uh, don't uh, allow your rationalization or intellect to get in the way just how do you how do you remember her what do you call her durga devi what do you say devi, devi. oh yeah so can 
can every breath become devi 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 i actually chant a mantra yes. like like today feels like a day full of grace because yes. while i was coming this side in the morning and i was chanting the mantra while traveling and it's like i'm meeting kali everywhere since morning so it feels like today she's Full chosen on. to yeah. you know bless yeah. me Take. with her felt presence Take. um but yeah as i was hearing you speak like i felt a lot arise in me and it feels like it can be it can be something as simple like having a routine how even she was talking yes. and sticking to that routine yes. no matter what like for me coming here every monday has started to feel like a non negotiable like like mondays are not accessible to anyone anything else and i yeah maybe i feel some very simple things like those um can be very helpful because even as i say that like the desire either explodes yes. or it extinguishes yes. but i feel the lapse between the two has kind of reduced Take. like it doesn't extingu- extinguish or kind of it doesn't get obscured yes. for a long time Take. you know it it becomes accessible then goes then becomes accessible yes. yeah so i feel maybe like just sticking to a routine no yeah. matter what and i and i yeah. find it so beautiful when you insist on like may god the yeah. priority yeah. and yeah i feel i need to do that thank you very good very happy and you see that as you explore what all you can bring to her service you will find more and more you see because um if i say to you um tell me something from uh, what happened yesterday uh, and something you don't have to say it but your memory starts providing something you see so you can have some memory about her as well so i could have said what is your best uh, memory of her and then so in your uh in your system in your in the various uh, layers of your being you see there are many faculties uh, and once you align all that seems to be at your disposal towards god then your intuitive faculty starts to just open up and then you will find that in that in the presence of that uh, sadguru within it is like um, the greatest sage the greatest bhakt of uh, devi will guide you as to how to be with her all the time see so yes so don't worry about the it doesn't always have to feel beautiful and amazing and those gifts have been given and you we must enjoy them and be grateful for them but uh, use whatever you have to stay with her yeah that's very helpful huh that's very helpful very good thank you thank you today it was a very peaceful like pleasant and i haven't found the presence but what do you say if it's too good then something 
something i'm not noticing maybe or <laughs> i said like that you said something like <laughs> right. uh, no no in the sense that uh, you find it too for easy for a particular day you may make that report but if you just say yeah it's easy maya doesn't grab me i'm always with god i'm just open and empty all the time it's not like that the many times it is just the mind setting us up for a slap which is coming soon yeah. so i just want to prevent as tough as i may sound my whole intention is to prevent that from happening mm. you see and instead you return uh, from any sort of mental delusions of grandeur to the uh, the humble servitude that the presence of god needs so it's okay for it it can be fun. a good my dear did you go and come or are you going to go now acha anyone else wants to share where they get stuck or what's happening with them why are you holding the mic because is it audible like this is it fine it's fine okay. <laughs> i just felt like i could now now i can yeah. can you share one ah yeah Yeah. So, um, for many decades, father, I have been um, uh, addicted to painkillers, so, so medical drug addiction. So, with headaches, migraines, um, in 1995, 96, I started doing a lot of mantra jap, and I wouldn't let go of my mantra jap despite the uh, headaches. So it became a continuous cycle, and. Um, then in 2000 and 4 uh, or 5 i had to uh, i was uh, give up my medication because i was too addicted i taken too many medical drugs yeah. pain killers so two years three years they drive me out and then after a while i uh, the headaches became the body ache and the headaches became so bad that i went back on my medicines for my pain killers so i have dried out again in 2018 uh, which was Uh, basically the divine mother had said now please get out of medicines so i have been practically off my painkillers since 2018 now what is worrying me is that if if the ads that i'm doing is um uh, is causing the headaches migraines to come back and i am taking painkillers again and what would happen if i get addicted again mm. because drying yourself off in killers or if any medical drugs is is tough it's very hard so you want to say that you must share a little bit in terms of what is the method you're using to pray what is the chant because it should not uh, really cause this kind of uh, side effects and we should explore the the mind is trapping you in some way into you know giving up or um, how how are you how are you praying or it is it cause a headache with the breathing um, with the breathing i do have sinus issues um, so get yes, sinuses flare up every now and then whenever the season okay is has extra cold and etc but it's normally for about 3 4 weeks or month etc and the season goes on So for that season, yes, I take my sinus medicines. I take my painkillers in a regular way. But um, with the uh, so usually I do my ADS in the morning. So I wake up in the morning. I sit and do my ADS. I'll do my two malas, and uh, then I feel with the breathing, with the breathing, at uh, this side, which is my uh, deviated nasal septum, 
which is a side also in which yeah. I get my migraines. You, when you're breathing, does it feel a bit forced or? After, yeah, I, I'm doing it by the mala. Yeah. So I feel either I stop and do it by this little mala and then break it up instead of trying to uh, do two malas continuously and that maybe that's too much for the sinus. Yeah. I don't know. But this cervical pain and sinus pain then, there is an issue here. I have a, 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 a tinges problem because of the carotid artery. Yeah. So this is what seems to get inflamed. And then what happens is, then the, the headache remains throughout the day. Yeah. So at some but point, are you breathing differently in the ADS than you are d during the day? Uh, yes, during the day is a normal kind of uh, breathing yes. where I'm not focusing at all on it. ADS, I'm doing the live breathing. Yes. So, good. so, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's just like normal breath, just the timing is, uh, match with the mantra no i think it's a deeper breath it's a deeper breath let's it's try not to breathe breath. few days uh, let's try to just breathe as normally and uh, don't try to fill your lungs nothing just we're timing the mantra with your breath so that there's you're using more layers of your existence and helps you to focus on god and uh, just breathe normally through your ads as well it doesn't have to be like that. You know, it's like this. I just do it for you, so. Uh, just uh, normally, like you're breathing now. Uh, just, uh, just the timing is like that. And if that also leads to some like breathing related thing, then do it without the breath. Just use your mala, that's fine. It's not always so bad. Yeah. It's just that, yes, if it does come, then the pain tends to stay throughout the day and night. Yeah, it's maybe some strain or something is being put by trying to make it deep breaths or something. No, you're not doing that. Perhaps. No, it's gentle. In fact, it should become gentler and gentler breath. When samadhi, you're not even aware of your breath, then it just becomes... When we were walking, Father, yeah. and I was doing my mantra, the ADS, it didn't cause a headache. Yeah. If I think it became better, first, second, third, it actually became So for better. a few days, just do it as gently as possible. In all ways. Don't try to make anything happen. Just like a little child, you're praying, you're remembering God. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes there is a sense of effortlessness and openness and there isn't this longing or desire for God. I don't want this to be a trap like you say. Well, in your heart you know, like sometimes a lot of the day may go in this just openness, lightness, but His gentle presence is always there in a reassuring way. So. That is a good indicator. But even otherwise, just openness. You know, you know in your heart, you'll be guided in the heart. Whether it is a mind trick or it is, uh, it is true openness. Yeah. So there are some questions about how can all the childish games be finished and we really stay in his light, in his presence? And all this coming to satsang, uh, praying, uh, inquiring, chanting, all these methods, they themselves will provide the momentum for it to deepen. So the prayer itself teaches us how to pray. The prayer itself gives depth to, to the prayer and the prayer itself introduces us to the one who is being prayed to. Such a beautiful tool it is. Yeah. Yeah. So Hanumanji again said this. He said, uh, the sadhana itself shows us how to do the sadhana. Yeah. The sadhana itself deepens the sadhana. 
and the sadhana itself introduces us to the sadhya, the one who this the sadhana is for. So if you are empty for God, then that emptiness will show you how to be empty. If you are inquiring for the truth, then the inquiry itself shows us how to inquire. Like there comes a point in your inquiry where you no longer, and don't rush into these things, okay? So, but you are no longer saying, who am I, who am I? You are just sitting in inquiry and remaining with your intuition and it's revealing the answers to you, okay? Sometimes um, you may just start and say, who? <laughs> or just, who? who? <laughs> like that. And you're already in the inquiry. You see? So, uh, the inquiry itself deepens the inquiry. The inquiry itself introduces us to the reality of the I. It teaches us how to inquire. Because worldly instructions are just not enough. <laughs> See, they can bring us to the point that we have to start relying on our intuitive guidance after that. See? So how does inquiry happen? How does inquiry reveal the truth to us? There comes a point where we just learn to be empty in the guidance of the presence, isn't it? In the light of that presence, we encounter ourselves as the nirguna. That nirguna recognition of ourselves is done under the guidance of the Sadhguru within. Like nobody can do the inquiry and come to themselves, by themselves. Everybody asks, who am I? At least in this type of satsang, in our lineage. So everybody can ask, who am I? And then how, if we can do it ourselves, then uh, why doesn't everybody come to the answer? Of course, everybody thinks they came to the earth. <laughs> That's a different point. But uh, what happened? The same thing happens as happens in Zen. The same thing happens as happens in Bhakti. That we just empty ourselves and surrender to the true teacher within. He shows us. Why can't we find the answer to a koan? Because we are using the wrong instrument. So the koan teaches us to let go of the false instrument. You see, after maybe 10, 15 years of practice or whatever, we are just trying to answer the, how did the goose leave the vase? <laughs> and, uh, and it shows us a different way. Because our inner systems work like that. You ask yourself a question, you say, this is really important. What is the origin of mankind? Then you'll keep asking, some way or the other, you'll keep asking if that becomes important to you. So if the koan becomes important to you or the inquiry becomes important to you, you see, then you realize after a few years that the traditional systems we have in, at our disposal are not working. You see? Our mind doesn't help us with the question, who am I? It just gives us some stale, stale learned knowledge, it doesn't help. See, the intellect is just judging, at best it can judge not this, not this, not this. See? So it can be an aid in the niti saying, not this, not this, not this. But what this is, where we come to the point where we cannot say not this anymore, where do we recognize that we are at that point? Did that sound too complicated? <laughs> okay. Our intellect can help us say, not this. I perceive this, I am not this. I perceive this, I am not this. I perceive this, I am not this. But there comes a point where we no longer are able to say, I am not this. You see? 
but who is seeing what over there? Is it your perceptions that are seeing something saying, I, I can't say not this to you? No. Because whatever you, you perceive, you can still say not this. It may be a dark empty space, it may be an abyss, it may be a void, whatever you call it, you can still say not this. But you come to a point where you can no longer say not this. But with which instrument are you coming to that point? What is the mode of knowledge? That is the, those are the eyes of the Sadhguru within. The same intuitive insight which is guiding you in prayer. So the point is to really either use everything at our disposal or just everything at our disposal, keep it empty for God. With which instrument do we come to the end of the Niti Niti? Because everything you perceive, you can say not this. Dark space, empty space, full, full space, empty, nothing, anywhere, not this. Then? Then what? And then what is left after that? There you can't go here. You can't go with this or with this. Inward eyes also, not like this. Only with your heart eyes you can go. What is that beyond perception? Everybody loves to say Nirguna, Nirguna, <laughs> Nirguna Brahman. Without any attributes. How we made that? With what faculty, with what ability? And there we realize that jnana and bhakti are the same. Because we come to the same point. Okay, before I start making speeches again, who else has a problem? What is that um, when I was driving to come to satsang, spontaneously without doing anything, the light started to shine just in the car. I don't know, I mean, this is how it feels like it was in the car, but whatever was happening, suddenly I started to feel like, you know, something is shining. And then I'm in the hall, and then now it's more, you know, really feels like you know, uh, the body sensations start to weaken. You feel like the light is the doer, that's the, the living one. Uh, and it's the most amazing thing. But I just also want to say that before, when I was ca caught up, because I, I was caught up in business and other things, then I was aw aware of the presence, but it felt like, you know, I'm being aware of it and then I have to do something you know, uh, you know, like an inquiry or chanting or something to understand it correctly. But it was a totally night and day between this and that. I mean, frankly, um, the heart is guiding right now that only the light is. That's the only reality. Um, uh, but I don't want to go back into, you know, go back into another camp where then I'm struggling to, you know, ascertain what is this presence, I'm the body trying to, f I'm the person trying to, you know, figure out, I mean, that's, uh, it's not real, it doesn't feel real, in, I mean, it feels so much at odds with the satsang experience, 
can't, and I know they're, you know, they're poles apart. So, because a doer is different. So I just want your, you know, your help and Thank guidance to you. kind of get rid of the falls. So I don't want to vacillate between trying to find and, you know, the guidance. Very good. Very, very happy to hear. So, I want to say one thing that in the non satsang times or when it doesn't seem that palpable, it doesn't seem that tangible, you see, and it happens here as well, that uh, there are times like that. But my feeling is, my sense is that our attempt, our intention, our faith, in spite of the difficulty to try and meet God in those world oppressed, or Maya oppressed time, you see, actually fructifies, uh, brings fruit in times where we are in satsang, where we are in times where we, we are at peace and we can be with ourselves. So we should not get frustrated at all, not that you were, but, but uh, we should never feel like, oh, but there when I inquire, I don't really feel the presence. You see, it's not that easy, it's, it seems very heavy, things seem difficult. You see? But that, because God knows everything, you see? that attempt to be with God even when Maya has got us everywhere, you see, brings fruit in times where, uh, where uh, you're in less oppressive environment. So, and that sort of links in with uh, her question also that, uh, uh, if undeservedly we have been gifted so much grace, then with a deeper love for God, with a deeper sacrificing intention, with a deeper sense of inquiry, it's going to uh, really uh, benefit uh, very deeply. Also that, uh, suppose it always happened, I just said Ram Ram Ram, then we become so arrogant and proud and complacent. <laughs> So he knows the right, the right curriculum, the right experiences, the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of dryness. He knows how to cook this recipe really well. You're going very well. Keep at it. And remember that uh, the light is the light which is unperceivable. And the perceivable light where it comes out of this unperceivable light is the sweet byproduct of that. You see, so keep your focus on that unperceivable light and enjoy the byproducts when they come, eh? but don't grasp on any of the perceivable byproducts. Ah, there's, a, there's a hand up. Oh, there are a few hands up. Okay. Magic Labs. Okay. <laughs> Narain, you want to come up? I don't know whether he can hear. Let's go to Seppi. Okay. Namaste. Namaste, my dear. I wonder if I need to check in. Yeah. Because for me, I don't have much to say. Yeah. I don't know what to say. 
Just say anything. We'll get there. <laughs> I feel it's all happening by itself. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. I don't know if there is anything more I need to say or I need to do. Yeah. Except then um, just surrendering to God's will for where I have to be and, and all of it. Yeah. Yes. Do you feel his presence with you? I do. Does it feel like it comes and goes or you always feel it? I definitely don't feel it's like it's finished. Huh? I don't feel it's like I'm, I'm completely empty, like, um, yeah, like as I can be. And so I, if I was to just... Uh, um, ask a difficult question and you just speak from the heart whatever feels true. So if you look at uh, the day yesterday, were you mostly with God's presence? Yesterday I was in satsang with Guruji, so that was... <laughs> that's okay, well, that's sorted. <laughs> okay, what about the day before? Uh, yeah, just these few past days it has been like that actually. That I have hey. been with Guruji in Satsang, or I have met with Guruji. So, yeah, it has been very much um, a life presence these days. Yeah. Yeah. So, for now, we seem to be fine because you've had the support. Uh, yeah. She's support in this way. So, mm -hmm. just stay with that, stay with it in your heart, whether you're being empty in that way and just watching or whether you're inquiring or you're praying, whatever gets you to his light, his to keep the focus on him. So just be like that and uh, uh, maybe in a few days in the next satsang or the satsang after that you can make a report and say, uh, okay, this is how it's actually been uh, after not being in satsang. Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, Anantiji, I I also um, have been working a lot, so yeah. um, there I can see the contrast um, of dealing, having to deal with people, um, and my work is also like this that I have to talk with a lot of like um, I'm making phone calls of patients. I see. I see. Uh, and I have to plan appointments for them according to the urgency. Um, so a lot comes up there um, as there is pain involved for people and um, unrestless. They are not, you know, like um, they are mostly in a difficult situation and um, I have to stay calm in that. Um, so that's a, that's a save so in when, itself. When yeah. these phone calls are happening, uh, is his presence palpable to you? Um, a lot of times it is. Um, and a lot of times I feel I didn't stay fully in, in the calm place as I could. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so yes, so just bring that more and more into your life, even at work. This seems to be one of the themes of today's conversation that uh, how do we deal with the work situation and uh, that's why I'm saying that your primary work is within and from within allow your outer work to happen. Okay. So um, just experiment with that a bit and see what happens. You see, because if you say that uh, mostly even at work, uh, I'm just with him and his presence is apparent, his light is clear, I feel a love for him even when I'm working and a few times I get caught up in something and I leave that and I become personal and identify, then the answer could be different compared to you say, oh, mostly I seem to be identified and caught in these things and but sometimes I do remember him and return. So based on your report, the answer could be 
different as well. So experiment and see how it goes and let me know what you feel. Yeah, mostly Anantaji, I feel that I am really open to um, how God is guiding everything. And um, I feel I'm quite flexible in um, just staying open and seeing how he guides and how he does everything at work. That's okay. um, yeah, so I don't feel like... But, but do you feel like you have met him? And if you feel like you have met him, that he is with you palpably, easy? In the sense that uh, what I'm getting from your report is that you feel so open and surrender that you allow everything to unfold in his will, you see, as he will. You see? But what I'm asking is that, uh, is he a living reality for you? you see? Or is it uh, like a, uh, like a idea that yes, everything happens in God's will and I'm just allowing it to happen, which is very beautiful already. I'm not putting it down, but uh, the deepening would be to make it your living reality moment to moment. What would you say? I would, now that you're asking, I have to look. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, you tell me if I'm coming from, from the true place. Um, but how it feels for me is that um, I do feel he's with me, even if things come up, no matter what comes up in the emotions or um, like now, like some nervousness can be there or... Um, That's not, it's not an exam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. I'm trying to serve you in the best possible way. Exactly. Best possible way. So, when you say you do feel he's with you, just expand on that part of it. What do you mean by that? And take your time. There's no rush. You don't have to answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. He he is with me as um as a presence here. I feel there is a presence here, which is not separate from myself. And it's the liveness that is here. Very good. Very good. Very good. The presence, uh, it guides you, it uh, moves you, it lights you up, it loves you, you love it. Yes. 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 Very good. Very good. There is an it interest. Always, always mm -hmm. seem this way? It always seems like that? Uh, there are lots of mind to text as well. Um, yeah, sometimes just the mind to text come, but I feel it's coming in this, inside of this yes, mind. Yes. Everything happens within this. And yet there's a great beauty to remaining in the, the holiness in our heart and uh, as opposed to the maya of the world. So when the mind attacks you, um, what is the tool, what is the guidance from satsang uh, with Guruji or from here that you use to return to the love and the presence? I remember to not believe it. Whatever it is, not believe it. And that uh, allows you to just return to the openness, the emptiness and the presence becomes palpable again. Yes, I guess mostly. Eric, Eric. Very good. Nice. So keep do, keep at it, keep at this. And uh, if you come uh, next time and say that uh, this is working really well, I can just be open like that and uh, return to his light, then that's very good. If you say that there are many times where it seems very difficult and uh, what should I do then, then we can see if something is to be answered at that point. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, the crux of it, no? that we have uh, this waking state. But the beauty of this waking state is that we can live it taking the perceptual world to be real and true, or we can live it in love of God, in His presence, in His light. Uh, and everything that needs to happen in the world can happen from that space. So my job is only to 
uh, get you to the point where you are in this discipleship of the heart, where you follow your heart, you follow the Sadhguru presence within, which you beautifully described as your presence, it is the same. Your presence, your I amness is his I amness. So, uh, as we learn to live in his refuge, in in his light, then uh, then the whole our whole life gets transformed from what we thought it was into a truer life uh, in God's light, in His presence. Only Anantaji, thank you so much. The only um, um, difficulty I'm having is actually on this that my entire life has been for this for like yes. following Guruji and um, I don't see as you just were mentioning it shortly also any meaning in anything in the world yes. like I'm not it doesn't have a meaning it doesn't matter and um, even I used to have such a um, attachment to the physical presence of the Guru um, but even this is seen now and I, I want to confirm if this is true or um, because I feel like the outer forms doesn't matter at all. Even on the spiritual path, it doesn't matter what the outer form is. What matters is if I'm free in the heart or not. Yes. And yeah, and and getting like yeah, getting to this place, I guess this is where the um difficulty is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, trying to get somewhere trying to get yeah. this, to this freedom Very good. Yeah. i love this question so meaninglessness is a beautiful contemplation you see that the meanings that were given to the world are not true because they create these false narratives and these labels don't really apply to any perception that we call the world. You see? Now, what we have to be careful about is to then give it a blanket meaning, which is the new meaning that we are giving it, which is meaninglessness. Mm -hmm. That the world is meaningless, is a new meaning that we are giving to the world. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Whether we say it is meaningful, how we say it is actually meaningless. Both are meanings to the world, yeah. isn't it? So mm. I would guide you in this way and say that there is beautiful meaning in everything that God has created, but that meaning is not possible to encapsulate in our intellect. You see, the meaning is only intuitive. So mm. what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of the world? You see? can only be found intuitively and we may never have the words to because it's ineffable actually so we may not have the words to describe the meaning of it but but the sages have told us that at one level this maya is completely unreal you see? but uh, the same sages have also said that it's all his maya it's all his creation and everything that he has created is ultimately beautiful so um, these these um, things when looked at as statements can seem contradictory but in our heart intuitively we know that both are true you see? so so don't give it even the meaning of meaninglessness because if you give it the meaning of meaninglessness then you go down the route of some of the philosophers who recognize that we cannot provide intellectual meaning to the world so they became nihilistic and started saying it's pointless, you know, it's meaningless, you see, this kind of stuff. But it has deep meaning because it comes from God, but the meaning cannot be captured in our heads. The meaning is only in our heart. So the meaning of life, the meaning of uh, this world you see, is very deeply linked with love also in some way. But um, there are, at least I don't have the words to express that whole thing. It's true. I do feel the beauty of the presence, which is yeah. um, exactly. I understand what you say. That it is not yeah. expressing. The second, uh, second part of your question was that uh, 
whether you need the physical presence of a master or not that also your inner sadguru will guide you as you remain with that presence which is also called the sadguru because it is the best guide you see so he will guide you about that there are times where you don't need to be and there are times where you need to be you see but grace will provide the right opportunities life will create all the right spaces for these things to happen and god's light will guide you from within as to whether that is needed for you or not yeah this is sometimes hard to know if if yeah. um, so does because that... because of what you reported to me earlier i have confidence in telling you this but if somebody was completely new and they had this question and they felt like they cannot receive guidance from their heart you see then i would say just find a find a way to get to a guru you see find a way and be with them you see mm -hmm. and that whether it is zoom or whether it is uh, whether it is in person you see but since you said to me that uh, often you are able to remain in his presence then allow that presence to guide you and to move you because that is the highest teaching much higher than this mouth can ever provide yes i do feel that guru ji is also speaking through my heart yeah, um, okay. more and more like intuitively like through the universal intelligence and i just feel that you know offer all of this you know and drown in this love and energy very good. very good and that's what i've been calling the discipleship of the atma the discipleship of the holy spirit within the sadguru within which is which is all the external forms of the master are just trying to get you to that point so you can learn to live like that thank you i just want to show up with this openness and 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 ask you to scan me anything that is not open please help me to yeah this off this off this ego this identity I'm happy to hear your reports and to answer. My X-ray may not be the best in the world, but uh, I'll try. I'll try. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Narin. Pranam, Father. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, my dear. Can you? Yes. Ah, Pranam. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Father, my question was around, um, you know, a lot of time, at least that I've spent in satsang, asking questions about how to stay in presence when our own mind is, uh, quote-unquote, attacking us. But... <clears throat> In situations where it's a dear and loved one, family member, yeah. parent, child, uh, whatever the situation, where they are going through a mind attack and because you're the person close to them, you love them, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, there's a tendency to, out of compassion, trying to help them, but you start getting sucked into their storm. And at one level, I, I, I intuitively know the answer that the answer is probably just being silent and being compassionate because if when my own mind attack happens, nobody in the world other than presence can help me. How dare I even think that I can help somebody else who's going through a mind attack? But, but because it is such a loved one, yeah. <laughs> there is this uh, seductive desire to help. But then before you know it, you're in the black hole yourself and uh, yeah i just thought I'll, I'll share it even though intuitively it feels like silence is the answer uh, yes but that answer like uh, we've said before can change moment to moment it's just our job in that situation is to just be a window to our heart to just be a window to our heart in that moment and if that heart is silent at that moment, then silence and just being a supportive presence is helpful. Or if the heart speaks in that moment, then that is uh, helpful too. And you 
and we can't really predict how it is going to grow because uh, maybe I shared this in satsang that uh, my daughter was going through something and it just mm-hmm. came in my heart to uh, tell her to pray and I gave her one of my malas and I felt like she's going to say no way I'm not going to do this man no chance you know this kind of stuff <laughs> but she said mm-hmm. okay actually I'll do it you know she said right and mm-hmm. we can't predict that these kind of outcomes will happen but she actually mm-hmm. took the mala and she said that I've been praying and she said that actually her life, she made this report to me saying that her life is so much better since she started praying. So, mm-hmm. and I would never have expected it like conceptually, uh, I would not have expected that to happen. So sometimes you just have to take the risk and just follow what the heart is saying. Although many times mm. the mind will say, no, no, don't say that because she's not going to listen, is he, or they are not going to listen. Anyway, so no point, just be silent is better. But really, mm. we can never predict the ways of God, you know, we mm. just have to mm. go with the flow. We just have to go with uh, what he offers at the risk of rejection, at the risk of being called stupid and at the risk of mm. you know, uh, uh, maybe uh, aggravating the one even more. But we have no option but to really just follow his will in our heart and just to offer what comes. Mm. So don't judge your action based on the outer outcomes. Yeah. Judge your action based on the aftertaste that you feel in your heart. Yeah. yeah. So this is what, the- what happens, Father, is that uh, let's say it's Advaita and yes. she's going through something. Yes. There intuitively actually don't even think uh, stuff just comes up that needs to be said and usually the language spoken is in is like the language of satsang for lack of a better description and she is familiar with that language right or or that process and so it, it, it's it's easy uh, easy as in that that intuition feels like it it finds its expression uh, yeah. because the other side is receptive. Yes. But for somebody who's let's call it not from that world, and I don't mean that in any uh, derogatory or su- superior way. Just it's just that that's not the world. Yeah. I just don't know what to say other than appeal to somebody for God. I mean, I I, I have not found that answer in fifty two years of living. Yeah. So. In that situation, I'm, I meant silence. But if somebody is receptive, then it comes with confidence without any hesitation and whatever is spoken is spoken. Yes, my child. But what to do when we conclude that one is not receptive, but our heart is still communicating something. Mm. We still have to do it. No? There's no... Mm. Like we can't... Okay. O- okay. Overly our heart guidance yeah. with a notion of the other one's receptiveness or not. And it may happen okay. that your mind will come and say, see, I told you so. It may also do that <laughs> and say, I told mm. you that one is not open, still you're mm. going on sharing. But when your heart mm. moves, then your mouth is just to be in servitude to how your heart moves you. Mm. So let the world call us stupid okay. and irritating or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Let's go to Amrita. Namaste, Father. Namaste, my dear. Father, you've been answering, I feel, all in the yeah. process. Everything is just... I mean, here it was... It was just blasting inside the head yeah. so much. Yeah. But I think... Sorted now? Yes, mother. It's like it's just holding on to the prayer. It's coming back. You know, it's okay to slip. It's okay to go by, and then just coming back here is no the yeah. The truth. Every time, every time we fall, so to speak, and we return, therefore to get up, then it builds up our inner muscles to do that and to not fall and to get up faster. So 
but um, this path will be full of like that every day i fall to so much stupidity you know? so i am also learning and father one one thing you said that uh, he knows the right recipe like what experience to give what yeah. uh, like everything like what you need to feel or what what expression needs to come so yeah. in in that thing everything feels like everything is just right to come back here yeah very very good. everything is perfect for us to come back home sorry thank you father thank you father If the ideas help in dissolving festering resentments or grievances, well, there is nothing that God's presence cannot help. So, the Atma Darshan is to bring us to His presence. But you may realize that uh, as you come more and more to His presence, you don't want any more outcomes. All the outcomes you are willing to surrender to Him, and His presence is more than enough for us. Is God a living reality for us, moment to moment? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Very good.